Hi, I have in front of me a Lab Gear 40 meter 4K HDMI over IP extender. It supports uh, IR and for instance it'll work with a Sky Q box. Um, it's a HDCP uh, version uh, 2.2. Okay, so it's available with free delivery directly from free TV, uh, free TV.ie. Um, it's expensive, okay, uh, a lot more expensive than your standard um, senders, but the big thing with it is it'll work with the higher end um, uh, HDMI versions and nothing else in the market that we've tested will, okay. So you're probably paying about three times more for this than you'd have to otherwise, but often you just have no choice. The other thing about it is if you go with something like this, you're future proofing. So what, what are the two services that this unit's going to provide for you? The first thing is it's going to take the output from your HD box and send it up to 40 meters away over a Cat5 cable. And the second thing that's going to do is in the remote location, it's going to allow you to come along and actually change channels from that location, right? So it's a pretty standard product in terms of what it does, uh, but the fact that it'll work with uh, version 2.2 uh, is, is very, very impressive. And there's a huge amount of 4K products in the market that are not truly 4K. 4K is a very, very loose standard. Uh, like it could be version 2.2, it could be version um, 2, 2.0, and it could even be lower specs than that, depending on it. Indeed, if we look at a lot of the big CCTV brands in the market, they have three megapixel and um, that they're marketing as being 4K, where you know the real standard for 4K often would be starting at around uh, eight megapixel, okay? So it's a pretty confused space. So when anyway, you buy this box, it arrives at your house, what's in it and how do you set it up, okay? So the first thing here is, so there's a pretty good description on the back of this, how you're gonna set this up. And we actually use this ourselves when we're trying to figure it out initially, okay? So um, uh, the first thing to note here is that we have um, a, um, a power unit that will work with it here, okay? So that's only on the sending end. So we have a transmitter here and we have a receiver, okay? So I'm gonna talk a little bit detail as we wire them out, but basically they're faced each other and they're connected, interconnected by a, a LAN cable up to 40 meters long. Okay, each of them has a, an IR sensor, two set of sensors with it. So there's a transmitter and a receiver one. Now, for the setup that we're doing here, we'll only be using um, one sensor on this end and a different sensor on the far end. So a different ones on the transmitter and the receiver end. Now, in theory, you might need to use it in both ways, but not in any practical application that I can ever think of, okay? There's RS485 connections here. This is allowing you to push this in, connect it in, and you can do updates from PCs, things like that. Absolutely nobody's gonna use these, but anyway, they're in it there. The guys who designed these uh, in lab here are real techies, right? They really know their standards, they know everything. They tried to sell us this product some time ago, and we were saying, not so hot in it. And then when we start coming across all these people who cannot get their Sky Q, or indeed some of the divergent higher spec one boxes not working with it, all the rest of it, all of a sudden we knew that we have, have a problem, and this fixes it now, because all of a sudden people are starting to use the version 2.2 quite commonly. We also have these little racks here, and this is just to make a rack mountable. So both the sender and receiver are doing it, and that, that once again fits in with the general overall high spec uh, version of it. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna start the assembly process, get it working, and then we'll look and see what, where we are, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna connect this quite strange looking power connection here, just screw it in, and we screw it in here, and it gives a really tight connection. It's locked in here now. I'm actually hanging it from it, okay? So that's the first thing. The next thing here is I'm actually going to get the HDMI lead output from here. I'm going to run it in here and push it in. I have that connected. I'm going to power plug in this trick pin power plug on it, okay? This actually came in two parts, um, the power plug. It's just a, the tree pin thing just snaps onto it, but it works reasonably well. I just have to, actually I just have a cable in the way here. I have that pushed in there now. And that's going to power up, okay? So that's nice. And um, we have to see the little power light on the front, but it's indicating it here. Okay, and if we actually come along and we see which one here we want to use, what we want to use is the uh, the, trans the IR out here, okay? Because, and the reason we want to use the IR out here is this is for the remote control element of it. Now I'm going to come back to this in a minute here, but remember what we're trying to do is we're trying to send a picture from the set-top boxes here and imagine that this television is maybe 30, 40 meters away in a, this maybe is in a cabinet and this is 40 meters away and it is 
is in a television room, maybe in a bar or something like that, and you want to be able to operate it from there. So if we come to the far side then, what we want to do is we want to grab a LAN cable to connect it. So we're going to pretend this is a 40 meter LAN cable. And I'm just going to come along, connect this in here. I'm going to run it across. So we'll obviously have it facing over here if possible. Um, the cable is twisting it back on me unfortunately. And I'll just push it in here on this side. Now there's a power unit here where this could be powered locally, but almost invariably you won't need to do it. Okay. The only reason you need to power it locally is if there was some high level of signal loss, something like that, and you just needed to boost the gas out of it. But in general, you don't need to do that. And what we need to do then is we need to come along and take the picture out of here and run it into the television. Okay. Now, without any IRs connected something like this, at this point, this actually should be working for us. So think about what's happening here is we're taking the HDMI output from here. We're running it here. It's converting it into a LAN type connect connection. So you can send it over here. So it's sort of a well, over IP here and it runs here and then it converts it from here back into HDMI and back over to the television. Okay. Now on this one here, on the first unit here, we use these really tiny little IR sensors here. And the purpose of that is to send, well, I'll talk about this one here first and it'll make more sense maybe when I explain it this way. So this one here is IR in, okay? So what we'll do is we'll come along, this little bag that came with here, it'll have a little sticky pad. And what we'll do is normally we'll unfurl this little cable here, we'll roll it back and we'll sit it up on top for television, okay? So now suddenly when we come along, and we grab the remote control that goes with this. What will happen is we aim the remote control at it, it picks up the signal, it runs it into this box here, it sends it into the LAN cable here, runs it back over. The LAN cable here takes the HDMI cable back out, but it also splits back out the IR signal here. And we position the IR sensor here in front of the box here, just in front of where the IR input is, where we normally have pressed the remote. And all of a sudden the signal from over here runs through that network cable, bang over here. And when we say change channels here, it'll change channels over there, okay? So that's exactly how it work. So, you know, I, I've, I've shot this video a thousand times, uh, well not a thousand times, but on various different models of the existing HDMI over Cat5 cables here. The big thing on this is that it's got the IR control and it'll work with, with true 4K, okay? So the boxes that we, you'll need something like this with right now on the market that I'm aware of is obviously Sky Q. There's some of the true um, uh, blue um, uh, DVD Blu-rays that are using true 4K and also to say I think the latest version of the version media box as well it's a full uh, 2.2 uh, output on it as well so I believe you actually have to use one of these with it so we're living and learning people buy products off so they don't uh, work with their particular setup we find out the specs what they're trying to use it with and constantly that's how we're finding like more information for the marketplace so this particular unit here we sell one a month now we sell two or three a week and the reason is that people are running into these problems they want to get the extra content and uh, the full thing and it's not being supported on the existing senders so that's it anyway an overview of the lab gear 40 meter uh, 4k hdmi over uh, ip extenders um supporting ir and uh, hd uh, cp version 2.2